So this is the full Intel BIOS guide. We're gonna go over all the settings in this MSI BIOS. You can transfer this over to other BIOSes if you want, but this is just gonna be for MSI BIOSes and it should transfer over for every single other BIOS as long as you're on Intel. But anyways, we're gonna go to overclocking settings and then peak core ratio, you wanna set this to whatever the max turbo clock speed for your CPU is. So I have a 13900 KS, as you can see on the top right. So for me, it's gonna be 56. And if you're on a 14th gen i9, it's gonna be the same thing, 56. I just like doing that and on MSI and setting that to fixed mode, just so you lock all your cores at a certain speed. And that just can help with a lot of issues and it could prevent the degradation issue as well. So we're gonna set these AVX values to zero. So basically CPU ratio offset when running AVX. Anytime you put an AVX workload, it'll drop, but we just don't want it to drop. So we're gonna set it to zero. Ring down bin, disable this. That's a power saving feature. Go to advanced CPU configuration and hyper threading. For most of us, you could disable this. However, if you do editing, if you do blender, if you do like workloads that require more threads, keep hyper threading enabled. Now, active e cores, if you play Call of Duty, I would recommend keeping this on all. However, if you don't play Call of Duty and if you just play Fortnite, Valorant, and a little bit of Apex and all these other games, CS2, then you can just set this to zero and it will most likely boost your FPS by a lot. But for Call of Duty, it's the opposite. Setting this to all for Call of Duty actually increases your FPS as long as you have the right render worker count. So for me, I'm gonna leave this on all because I do play Call of Duty. So if I didn't play Call of Duty, if I just played four, I would set this to zero. But anyways, I'm gonna leave this to all. Ensel Adaptive Thermal Monitor, disable that. That's a power saving feature. Ensel C-State, disable that. And the issue with Ensel C-State is it does increase your temperatures. So if your CPU cooler is terrible, guys don't follow this video whatsoever if your CPU cooler is terrible, I'm not why. But anyways, Intel Speed Shift Technology, disable that. And then scroll down to pretty much the bottom. We're gonna disable this TVB stuff. So TVB ratio clipping, TVB ratio clipping enhanced, and TVB voltage optimizations. And then just DMI link speed, make sure this is maxed out. Then press escape to go back, scroll down. And then extreme memory profile for everyone, set this to enabled. Now, depending on the speed, as you can see, my speed is 7,200. If I didn't have this specific motherboard, this speed would not work. If I had a four dim motherboard, then I would have to drop this down to 6,800 if I had a motherboard with four RAM slots. But I don't have that. I have a motherboard with two RAM slots and it's guaranteed to work at 7,200. So I will test around and see if, if the memory that you bought works with your motherboard. If it doesn't, then just drop down the speed by 400 megahertz and it should just work flawlessly. Go to advanced DRAM configuration and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Disable power down mode. This is a power saving feature for RAM. We don't want that. Press escape scroll down and then go to cpu features at the bottom disable intel virtualization tech and disable intel btd tech these are just virtualization related things so if you don't use virtualization just disable do aes instructions this is pretty much just encryption instructions so we don't really need those they're just for security so you can disable that cfg lock is just configuration lock just disable it and then we're going to go to motherboard settings on the left and what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to advanced and MSI driver utility installer, disable that. And then go to PCI subsystem settings. Every single gen mode setting, you're gonna max this out to the highest gen speed. So for all of these, it's gonna be like gen four or gen five. Let's see that one's gen three. Keep maxing these out. And on this motherboard, what I like to do is I like setting my first PCI link to X16 plus X0. This basically just sets it so my graphics card gets the full X16 lane. Just do that and then disable PCIe native power management. This is a power saving feature. And then go to PCI ASPM settings. Make sure all of this is disabled. Go back twice. Go to integrated peripherals. And I just disable this extra Intel uh, ethernet controller just because I don't need the uh, second ethernet port. So I'm gonna disable that. And also I don't need this SATA controller down here. And I don't use the audio jacks on my motherboard or on my case. So I can just disable the HD audio controller. However, if you do use the audio jacks, don't disable that. If you do use your second ethernet port, don't disable that. Just disable what you don't use. Then go back, go to Intel Thunderbolt. Everyone can do this, just disable PCIe tunneling and then go back, go to USB configuration, 
disable XHCI handoff. Legacy USB support can also be disabled. However, if you disable this setting, your USB will not show up. So make sure that if you're gonna disable this setting, you remember to enable it whenever you plug in a USB. Then go back. And that's gonna be pretty much it for these settings in BIOS. You're gonna, now you're gonna go to boot. And usually I disable fast boot if I'm doing a memory overclock. However, if you're not overclocking and you're just leaving your PC on XMP and stock speeds, then you don't really need to disable this. Go back, go to security. And for most of us that are Windows 11, you wanna make sure secure boot is enabled and you wanna make sure trusted computing is set to enabled as well. Then just go back twice. And what I like to do is I like to go to hardware monitor and I like setting all my fans to full speed. So I'm just gonna press F on my keyboard. As you can see, it's gonna set all my fans to full speed and you can see the RPM is raising up that over here. So that's just to make my PC run cooler and lower temperatures equals more performance and better overclocking. So it's good to do. And then go to OC profile. What I like to do is I like to save this as a profile and that's just because just in case you have to reset CMOS, just in case if there's a power outage and for some reason your PC just resets the BIOS, you can just load all these settings again and you don't have to do go all through this whole video again. You just load this profile and call it a day. However, if you do update your BIOS, these profiles, all of these will go away. So make sure not to update your BIOS because it will revert any of these profiles and you have to pretty much redo all these settings, including any overclocks that you did and including any other changes. So that's gonna be pretty much it for these BIOS settings. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna press F10 to save and exit. As you can see, this is all the stuff that we changed. Press yes on that. And you do have to give your PC a little bit of time. It's gonna shut off, turn back on, and then usually it turns off one more time and turns back on if you're enabling XMP. And let's just say you do get an error due to your RAM. It just says memory overclock failed or something like that. You do have to turn down the RAM speed a little bit or you have the RAM in the wrong slots. For everyone that is watching this video on DDR5, always use slots two and four. If you're on DDR4, same thing. However, if you filled up all your slots in your motherboard, you don't worry about it. And as you guys can see, now we're loading up. So now I'm gonna choose the OS. And now we're gonna hop right back into the PC and we're gonna check our temperatures and make sure everything is applied. All right, so to check our temperatures, we're gonna use this program called HW Info. I've showed this in many videos, but all you're gonna do is go to the website in the description, hover over installer, click free download and click local. It's gonna start downloading. And then just open up the EXE and go through the whole HW Info setup. Now, once you're here, you're gonna make sure you check sensors only. That's very important. Once you do that, click start. And as you guys can see, we're gonna be looking at core temperatures and CPU package. These are the two things that you need to check after doing those previous bio settings and make sure they're not hitting 80 degrees or above while you're gaming so now i'm gonna launch call of duty hop in a match and see what it's looking like all right everyone so as you guys can see now we're in game we're hitting about 70 degrees on the cpu package around 50 now so this is perfectly fine there's going to be no issues regarding performance or any temperatures while i'm running at this temperature right here so make sure that you guys are not hitting above 80 degrees while playing again if you guys are you need a new cpu cooler and you need to just revert the bio settings that we have done at least just revert the intel c state setting and keep everything else whatever you set it to so that's how to basically make sure the bio settings are not going to give you any issues and how to make sure that you're not going to reduce your performance by doing bio settings that increase your temperatures so anyways guys that's going to be pretty much it for this video comment down below if these bio settings helped you they will in fact definitely help you just because i use these same bio settings on clients now if you're interested in getting a optimization done for your computer go to the link in the description and head over to zilly.net we go through overclocking your ram overclocking your cpu overclocking your graphics card setting up a custom windows 11 installation and making sure that all of your games are using the correct configuration files and the correct settings so if you're interested in that go to the link in the description we've worked with top professional players in a game called fortnite so we've worked with the best of the best in esports if you guys are interested drop down below but anyways leave a like subscribe to this youtube channel for more videos like this and if you guys are in need of any assistance or help just comment down below or join my discord server i'll be gladly to answer your questions but i'll see you guys in the next one peace out